today is a huge day huge so today me and my mom are going to go see drum roll please yes the iconic the beautiful the legendary boss woman herself oprah winfrey yeah you heard right oprah winfrey me and my mom are going to go see her at phillips arena today and i'm so freaking excited like this is a once in a lifetime type thing like i can't believe it i i'm so excited i oprah is amazing like she is so influential love her i hate her you cannot knock her hustle you cannot knock her accomplishments she's oprah winfrey and i feel like there's not that many black women like there's not that many black women who are doing what she's doing there's not that many black women for us to look up to that has accomplished with such poise what she has accomplished like her michelle obama i i'm gonna see michelle obama one day i haven't seen her but like it's oprah oprah i'm so excited like y'all it means the world to me to be able to see such an amazing beautiful boss black woman like she inspires me so much and to start 2020 off seeing oprah like to start the decade off seeing her and to learn from her and to hear her speak in person like i'm so excited you guys have no idea so i'm gonna vlog it i'm gonna bring you guys along um i'm not sure if i'll be able to bring my camera in but um i'm gonna definitely like take some videos on my phone at least and kind of like show you guys how the day goes um what we do maybe even put in some um some clips of oprah talking y'all i'm so excited it's oprah winfrey like oprah freaking winfrey i'm so excited i it, she has so much knowledge and wisdom to share like she literally built her fortune from from nothing she worked for everything that she has like i look up to her i'm so excited so so excited like it's oprah winfrey oprah and i i just i can't believe it this is we're starting out 2020 seeing oprah and it's about 2020 vision and i'm so excited so let's get into this vlog so i'm just gonna show you guys what i'm wearing i'm sorry for the horrible lighting um it's still pretty dark outside because it's early um so i'm just going off the room in my light and it's really bad but i'm wearing this turtleneck from Shein, I believe. I got it a long time ago, so I'll try to link it if I can find it. But it's long black turtleneck tucked into my black jeans. I'm wearing black boyfriend jeans. Um, they're from Target, the Wild Fable brand, I believe, which is really good um, if you're looking for affordable clothes. Target has really good quality, too. So um, black turtleneck, black jeans, and then this long black teddy coat that I got from Shein as well. And I love this coat. It's so warm. And it wasn't that much. I'll try to link this too if I can find it. And then um, just some booties. Like literally you can buy these anywhere. I have no idea where I got these from. Because I've had them forever. And um, you can get them from like Forever 21, Target, um, like Rack Room Shoes. Literally anywhere that sells shoes. TJ Maxx, which is my favorite store in the whole wide world. So what I'm going to wear to go see Oprah Winfrey.
contentment and real joy. Many of you have heard me share the story of growing up in rural Mississippi, at the time we were called colored people, Negroes, and my grandmother was a maid, that's all she ever knew. The only real expectation she held for me was that I would one day become a maid. That was my grandmother's dream for me, but I had another dream for myself. My name is Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Spelled backwards. Truth is I'm tired. Options are few. I'm trying to pray. Be able to give that to your children in a way that you don't carry on what was done to you. So what is it you want your daughters to know about the way you love them? I want my daughters to know that I love them unconditionally, truly unconditionally, without condition. And I have a daughter who's 18 years old, her name is Simone, Jasmine, who just turned four, Tiana. baby Tiana, thank you, who is getting ready to turn two. And I, I am, as I told my 18-year-old daughter, Simone, I said, I love you. I'm gonna tell you I love you every day. I'm gonna text you, so I love you. So you're one of those, you're not supposed to know. You don't even have to know, it's about making mistakes that point you in the direction of what you do want to do. So many times when you're in your 20s, and I was talking about my daughter earlier, who was like, I don't know if I'm feeling my passion in this job. You keep the job, you feel your passion later. Because the 20s are about telling you what you want to do and don't want to do. And many times you're in a job you don't want or you don't like, and that job, of telling you what you don't like is just as important. Knowing what you don't want to do is just as important as knowing what you do want to do. Because if you're in a job right now and you know you don't want it, you're on the way to do something that you really do want to do. Because you're really clear about, I don't want to be here. So that's what the 20s are about. The 20s are about figuring it out. You make a lot of mistakes. No such thing as failure. Failure is just moving you in a different direction. It's saying, not here, go over there. Try this again. That's a 20. So it's a couple of days since me and my mom went to see Oprah. And honestly, I'm still in disbelief at the fact that I really, really got to see Oprah Winfrey speak. And it was amazing. Like, Oprah is such an influential person. Like, love her or hate her. She really worked her way, her way from the ground up. And she has touched so many people's lives. She gives back to the community. Like everything she was saying was so inspirational. I wrote out a couple of things here to share with you guys. Um, it seems like a lot and it kind of is, so I'm not gonna go through everything. But I kind of just wanted to like recap and talk to you guys about the experience because it really, it was so amazing. The energy in the building, like it's kind of, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just, it was so much fun. I learned so much and it makes me even hungrier to go after my dreams and goals in 2020. And The Rock was there, which was really cool. And he was also very inspirational as well because I didn't know really anything about The Rock's past and where he came from. And he basically worked his way up as well. And he's very hardworking. So it was really good to hear from both of them and really, really cool. So um, the theme, it's called Oprah's 2020 Vision, Your Life in Focus. So the theme of it was wellness. And Oprah's definition of wellness was basically balance. So being being well in every single aspect of your life, like um, your relationships, work, uh, mental health, uh, physical health, like everything, everything being in unison and everything being in balance as well as to Oprah. And I have to agree. So when you get there, you had a bag sitting in your seat. You had a workbook, um, which is really cool. I'm going to show you guys some pages from this. You had a pen. You had some um, Weight Watchers snacks, of course, because Oprah and Weight Watchers. And he had like deodorant, things like that. It was just like a little um, goodie bag, basically. It was really cool. So it began by um, basically us, we had these like groups come focused on like dance and wellness and kind of like movement. So we moved around, danced. It was really cool. Everybody was comfortable. It was really cool that nobody was like embarrassed to dance and be themselves. That was just the environment. Like everybody could be comfortable to be themselves, to have fun and to dance. So that was amazing. One of my favorite things that Oprah said during our time um, at her event was that she used to be afraid of excelling 
and being herself and being her full, full potential because she didn't want people to think that she was full of herself and ask her who she thought she was. So um, she's saying that she used to be afraid to be full and afraid to be powerful beyond measure because she, would, she didn't want people to talk about her that way. She didn't want people to think she was full of herself. What well, she's saying you should be full. She, she was saying you're, that your cup should be full and runneth over and that they should know that you're coming just from the click of your heels, just from the sound of your heels when you're walking and that they ought to be proud of you because of your because of your power and because of what you're doing because you're a phenomenal woman and you should know that it shouldn't matter what other people are thinking and she read this poem it's actually one of my favorites it's called our deepest fear by marianne williamson it's really it's a really famous poem and one of my favorite movies coach carter um, one of the players actually recited it too and it was amazing but i'm gonna read it to you guys just because i feel like everybody should hear this poem and it's it's literally amazing it's one of my favorites so it goes our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Just like every time you read that poem or hear it, it makes you, it like it sparks a fire in you, it lights a fire in you to really get after it and go after it because that's another thing that Oprah says. We are all created to do something amazing or special on this earth. It's not all going to be the same thing, but we all have special talents that are unique to us. She basically said, like, not to be afraid to be full. Just because people are going to think that you're full of yourself, like, that's their problem. You, you're supposed, your cup is supposed to be full and runneth over so you can help other people. And we all have a light that's supposed to shine. And we all have something that we were created to do on this earth and excel at. It's really cool because one of, the, like, her main quote, that she had written everywhere was I can and I will watch me and it's crazy because I want to put a clip in here and show you guys what my first quote in my bullet journal is and it actually is I can and I will so it's kind of crazy how that happens and how God works and we, we were basically using the same quote because 2020 is going to be a special year I feel like and I feel like this is going to be a year of going after your dreams it's it's a new decade and not letting anybody stop you and finding your light and letting it shine and not being afraid to let it shine because of what other people are going to say because everybody has a light that shines and we all have different lights. She talked a lot about being present in the moment um, because we can get really busy and um, we have this sense of FOMO in our generation or in our world now, which is fear of missing out. And she says now she discovered something called JOMO, the joy of missing out. So she says it's nice to be present in the moment and enjoy quietness and mindfulness and be aware of your own thoughts and feelings. So we also did some meditation there and I'm one of those people that is horrible at meditating because Sometimes it's even hard for me to fall asleep at night because my mind is like always running. I'm always constantly thinking about like what's next, what's next, what can I do better? How can I excel at this and how can I excel at that and how can I grow my YouTube and how can I travel and you know how, how can I like own my own house and my, my mind is constantly thinking about things so it was nice to meditate and I feel like when I meditate that my mind is always jumping from place to place and it's hard to concentrate. But they're saying that's natural, that's human. It's human to have thoughts when you're meditating. And they're saying that's one of the misconceptions that people think is that you can't meditate because your mind is always racing and thinking, but um, that's human. And it just takes practice. And whenever your mind starts to race and move away from the present moment to just bring yourself back in. So that was pretty cool here as well. And um, she talked about friends. Of course, she talked about Gail and um, saying you can't be friends with someone who is kind, even kind of slightly jealous of you because you can't move forward with anybody who is not happy for your happiness. It will suck the energy and your happiness out of everything in your life. So I thought that was really um, a really amazing too, to be careful who you choose to be friends with because you only want positive people in your life. If anything from this past week has shown us, it's that life is short, that it's, it's really important to just step back and to enjoy life and to smell the roses and to notice something different like because we, we we can tend to get into a routine like even when we're driving home sometimes we're driving home from work and we don't even know how we got home and that's something else she said so she said now when she takes like her walks or she does like her routine she tries to find something different in her routine every single day 
and I thought that was really cool because sometimes that happens to me too like I'm so tired and I'm driving home and then I'm home and I don't even realize how I got there so that's something I'm going to start doing I'm going to start trying to find something different in my routine or in my drive home like every single day and another cool thing that I liked from seeing her was that she talked about doing things with intention. She says that she does not do anything that she does not want to do and that she does not do anything without intention. Because she was saying anything that you do in life, even business-wise, education, educational-wise, anything, if you do it with a pure intent, then it's going to be successful. Basically, she said... Your principle should be intention. And then like, what is your why? What is your heart desire, not your head? And why were you put on this earth? Finding in, like, find intent in everything that you're doing. You get what you actually intend to have. So she also said for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Not only with actions, but with energy as well. So if you wanna live a healthy life, treat yourself healthier, live healthier, eat healthier. Um, you want more lo love in your life, start giving out more love and putting that, that energy into the universe. So put out what you want back. She was saying that number one is intention because intention drives everything. She said she used to be unhappy because she used to do everything that everybody else wanted her to do because she didn't do anything with intention. So that was one of the big things that she talked about too that helped with her wellness was doing things with intent and only doing things that she wanted to do. She stopped people pleasing. And I know that's really hard because that's one of my biggest problems. I'm always trying to please people instead of doing what makes me happy. So... That's something I'm going to work on because she said she didn't and she didn't get that into her 50s. And she also broke down some some um, she also broke down like the ages. So she said in her 20s was when you're is when you're supposed to figure things out. Like you're not supposed to have it all together in your 20s. You're supposed to find out what you like and what you don't like, what job you want, what job you don't want, how you want your relationships to be, how you don't want them to be. Basically saying that you're not going to have it all figured out in your 20s and then she was saying your 30s is when life starts to get good and your 40s is when you're really starting to live because that the, she's saying like the 40s are some of the, her best times and then her 50s is when she stopped caring about what other people thought and stopped people pleasing and then now she's in her 60s. I believe her birthday is today's the, 30, the 30th. I think her birthday is today, Thursday. Um, but she says she'll let us know like how her 60s um, is going or how it goes. But basically, she, um, and I'm in my 20s now and it was nice to hear that too. Because sometimes I feel like, especially with our generation and social media, like I'm so, I feel like sometimes I feel like I'm so behind in life and that I'm not moving fast enough and I'm not accomplished enough. But um, she was saying in your 20s, you're not supposed to have it all figured out. That That's what your 20s are for. They're for exploring and and learning. And those, those mistakes and those lessons lead you to your happiness and where you're going to be and what's going to make you happy. And um, that we should stop comparing ourselves see where is it she said to release the comparisons um and then she showed a video of her on the joan river show i'm not sure if you guys are aware but that was one of like um oprah's big challenges was her weight and um when she was on the joan river show joan basically like joaned her in front of the entire world about her weight i can't even imagine like on live national tv somebody blasting you about your weight so for a long time she struggled with her weight and that was her thing so i know the famous the famous oprah show where she drug out a wagon of fat because she had lost 67 pounds and she said all she could think about was her net her meal after that show so even though she had lost that 67 pounds she basically gained it all back because she didn't do it because she wanted to be healthy she did it to get into the certain pair of jeans and that's why the weight didn't stay off because the intent the intent wasn't pure her intent wasn't to live a healthy life. It was just to be skinny for that one show. So um, she, she ended up gaining all the way back because she didn't live a healthy lifestyle. And she basically starved herself and she was very unhappy. So um, that goes back to the intent thing and having pure intent when you're doing anything in life. So basically when your intention is clear, there's nothing betting against you. There's nothing that you can't do. Her, and she went back to her quote, I can and I will watch me. So make sure you guys find out or make sure when you guys are doing things that you're doing them with intent and that your intent is pure and you're not doing anything that you don't want to do. You only live once so you should do things that make you happy. And she was also talking about how underestimation is a blessing and that you should bet on yourself because when she first started the show, she was basically underpaid because she, she knew that she was going to be successful and she had confidence in herself because her confidence came from God. So um, basically, she allowed them to underpay her because she said if it works out, she wanted to the, she wanted to own fifty percent 
of the the earnings from the show and she said by the time that the show was over she earned she owned 92 percent and they they owned eight so she was getting 90 92 percent of the earnings and they only earned eight because she knew her she knew her worth she knew she was going to be successful so as she grew she's like you know what 50 is not enough i want 60 or 60 is not enough i want 70 because she knew like that it was the oprah show oprah was the one that made it so in the beginning they underestimated her but she bet herself even though other people doubted her and that actually worked the underestimation actually worked in her favor so i really like that story too that was really cool so um, allow your spark, allow yourself to be the spark, to be the catalyst that allows you to bet on yourself. You should always bet on yourself. And um, the last thing I'm going to talk about from the show, because I thought this was amazing, was on the last thing she talked about. Um, she went over, so when she was younger, before she became like the huge Oprah Winfrey show star, she talked about going over this um, this wealthy woman's house and that she just thought her house was so beautiful. She had a huge kitchen and she was like, when I get some money, I'm going to have a big kitchen. And then from the kitchen, you could see six trees and she counted them. And she was like, you know what? Rich people have six trees. And she just thought it was absolutely beautiful. So she said that when she makes it big, she's going to have six trees. So she said she went out for or she went one day she was in her kitchen and she looked up out of her window and she saw her trees. she saw six trees so she walked outside to count and she started counting and she got tired of counting so she and she said she hired a tree counter and it ended up and then she said she ended up having 3,741 trees so she dreamed of six trees and she ended up getting 3,741 like what a blessing and that's something that me and my mom talk about all the time because God's dreams are bigger than your dreams so God sees your dreams and he laughs because we like we think we're dreaming big, but what God has in store store for us is so much bigger than what we could ever imagine. She dreamed of six trees and she ended up getting 3,741 trees. And if you would have told that little black girl from Mississippi that grew up during a time where she said black was basically being black is basically illegal that she would grow up to have 3,741 trees and have this huge fortune and and be so influential and touch so many people and travel the world and meet so many amazing people. She she wouldn't have believed it. She would have thought you were crazy. So just just with us, if you if you're dreaming something, God's dreams are even bigger than what you're dreaming. So just work hard, have confidence, have intent and keep working in and we'll get there. We'll get there eventually because I, I believe I'll get there. I, I have confidence in myself and I have confidence in my God. And what's meant for you is for you. God's promises for you are for you. So I thought that was really amazing. And I love that part of the show. So um, she also gave us this workbook. So I'm going to do this. Um, I did a little of it while we were there, but I kind of I didn't really do everything because I wanted to really sit down and think about my answers. So I'm going to do this and it's kind of like she kind of has like some pictures of her in here. I could say like one negative thing from the experience. I would say that um, everything was Weight Watchers, which I understand. Like I'm not even saying it's negative because I know Oprah owns a lot of stock in Weight Watchers and she has used it and it has been successful for her. So it's like get your coins, sis. Like I understand. Like I, I respect her hustle. But like the food was Weight Watchers. Like every commercial was Weight Watchers. She had Weight Watchers come on the stage, even though the guy that was there had a really good story. He was an amputee and it was really cool. But it was just like literally everything. She went to Busy Bee's Cafe, which if you're, if you're from Atlanta, it's a famous um, soul food restaurant here. And um, But I liked how she said that even though they had Weight Watchers options, she got the catfish. I thought that was really cool of her to say that. I think if that was the only negative thing, it just felt like a big Weight Watchers ad, like outside from her talking about like actual wellness. I can't even knock her hustle. Like Oprah, Oprah is a businesswoman. She's an entrepreneur and I love that. Like honestly, she had me thinking like, do I, do I need a, a Weight Watchers cookbook? And do I need a, a subscription? I was really thinking about it. That's how good of a, a saleswoman Oprah is. Like if Oprah says something's good, everybody goes and tries it. If Oprah endorses your company, like your company is going to blow up because it's it's Oprah Winfrey and people trust her opinions. Back to this. So this was one of the first things that we did, your wellness quotient. It basically asks you asks you questions like based on your emotions, learning, work, nutrition and movement, purpose and relationships. And in the end, you add up all your numbers and it tells you your wellness quotient. So mine was 93. So for me, that means I know what wellness can be and I need to aim for it more. You have a contract for yourself. I really like this page because it's just like a contract and it's to hold you accountable. 
So um, it says, I, you put your name, will commit to a balanced lifestyle by focusing on blank, blank, and blank wellness. My intention is, and you write your intention, to sharpen my focus, I will build new healthy habits, and you write those new healthy habits that you wrote down in the pages before. Then you put, I will follow up with, so you put somebody to follow up with on um, a certain date, and then to discuss my process, my progress. And then you sign it, you have your witness sign it, and then your witness signs their email and cell phone number. So Oprah's not playing. She really, um, she really wants you to achieve this in 2020 and to um, work, work on your goals and work on your wellness. So yeah, so that's it for this video. Um, seeing Oprah was an amazing, amazing experience and seeing The Rock as well. He was very inspirational. I was really happy that he was there to do an interview because it was really cool hearing his story as well. So I'm gonna end this video with an excerpt from Oprah that you guys can see that she talks about in the end. And I was really, really happy to go and I feel so energized. Like I'm ready to get after, I'm ready to get after my goals. Even though I felt energized before, that just that just really was my spark. And I, I know I can do it, I know you guys can do it. Know your intention, know your goals, and don't let anybody stop you because like I said, God's dreams for you are bigger than yours. Just pray, pray for what you want and then work for it. And then once you once you put it in God's hands, let it be in God's hands. Don't stress over it. Don't don't let it consume you. Like let go and let God and just work for it. And I'm gonna leave you guys with the same quote as Oprah left us with and that I put in my bullet journal. I can and I will watch me. All right guys, so I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope you enjoy this clip from Oprah. It's waiting on you and is ready right now to move your life in a new direction. You get to decide. You get to decide. What is it you're gonna do? with this one wild and precious life, said Mary Oliver. What is it you're gonna do? The fact that you are here in this arena on a Saturday, giving up your time in the name of wellness means you are ready. You are ready to be well. You are ready to claim it. So don't waste a minute wondering if there is more, there is more. As long as there is bread, there is more, and you're meant to do more and be more. You're meant to manifest it. That's a key word for me. Manifest. Are you ready to activate your vision? Say it out loud with me. Play.